guys, this is Christy Falk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the US. Well, today I'm here with another sneak peek product from the new 2021 to 2022 annual catalog from Stampin' Up! And it starts a week from today, can you believe it? Don't have much longer to wait. And I'm gonna be featuring the Quiet Meadow Bundle. I just love the dies in this. You can get uh, a pressed flower kind of a vibe with your card. Had a lot of fun with this. I also used the gilded leafing that's in the January to June mini catalog. You can purchase this now. It's on back order, but they're supposed to get a shipment in real soon. And this will be in the new annual catalog as well. And I'm also going to use some paper that's going to be retiring from the January to June mini catalog. And you'll want to get that as soon as possible before it sells out. But it'll be available till June 30th or until supplies last. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let me show you the bundle that I'll be using. This is the new sneak peek product I was telling you about. It's the Quiet Meadow Bundle. It comes th with this stamp set and these beautiful dies. I love these dies. I couldn't wait to make a card with this. It was so much fun. And if you purchase this as a bundle starting May 4th, you'll save 10% and you can also purchase them separately too. But the best deal is to purchase them together as a bundle and save that 10%. Okay, I have one more thing I want to show you real quick. This is the beautiful Fine Art Floral Designer Series paper. And I'll be saying DSP from here on out, just a lot faster to say. But this is in the January to June mini catalog, and it will not go over to the new annual catalog. So you've only got till January 30th, 31st actually, or while supplies last. So this could sell out quickly, so you want to get a hold of this. But isn't that pretty? And I love the detail to that. Let me get a little closer. Can you see those? brush strokes in that. You can't feel it, but looking at it, you sure think you could. And what this is, is an artist painted these and they turned it into DSP. You gotta love that. But I love the colors. Here's the other side for that one. And then we've got this one, the other side. Then we have this one, and this is the one I'm gonna be using on the card. And I'm also using this side too. I'm gonna be using both of them. Then we've got this one the other side. I just love the different looks you can get with this paper. Now the next last two I'll be showing you, it just looks like a piece of framed art. Isn't that gorgeous? I could just see putting that in a frame and putting it up on my wall. It's just, oh it's pretty. There's the other side to that one. I love the brush strokes on the designs on the back of these two. And here's another one that you could just frame and put it on your wall. And then we've got this side too. Okay, so that is the Fine Art Floral DSP, so make sure you don't miss out on getting that. And the Art Gallery stamp set that's in that mini catalog that goes along with this paper is in the new annual catalog. So if we'll be able to create with that, you just won't have that DSP anymore. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the card. I'm actually still using a half sheet of cardstock, but I decided to go the other way. This is a four and a quarter by 11. And whenever it's this way, I think it's a lot easier. It's something about the grain in the cardstock. It's a little harder to fold that in half and get a nice crisp crease. So I'm gonna get my scoring tool on here, get that cutting blade out of the way, and go to the halfway mark, which would be five and a half, and score that. And it will fold a whole lot easier now. So let me grab my bone folder for my little dish over here. Okay, now we're going ahead and fold this. And that was so much easier doing it that way. Okay, now we're gonna put this to the side. We'll be using that here in a minute. We're gonna grab a piece of Knight of Navy. This is four by five and a quarter. And if you wanna stamp along with me, you can find uh, a link to my blog post. It's gonna have all the dimensions and the supply list for you. You can get all your supplies together and come and make it with me. Just wanna let you know about that quick too. So like I said, this is four, uh, four by five and a quarter. And then the two pieces of designer series paper, this is my top piece. This is three and seven eighths by three and five eighths. And this one is gonna be a bottom strip. This is three and seven eighths by one and a half. So let me grab my seal. And I'm, it's not gonna matter if they meet in the middle because we're gonna cover that up with some ribbon. The trick with this, since you're using two pieces, I'm gonna put this up here. I'm gonna make sure that the border of the Knight of Navy that's showing on the top and the sides looks pretty even. And it does, so we've got that on there. And this one, I'm gonna get the seal on it. Make sure my flowers look, see, yeah, I think I want it there. Now, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it again. So I, again, want the outside edges here to be even. 
don't worry about if I'm overlapping in the middle between those papers or if there's a space. I'm actually overlapping a little bit. No big deal. But see, that's the important part. You just want this board around here to be the same. Now that we've got this together, I want to show you a trick with the uh, gilded leafing. I want to have a nice straight border here. A lot of times you stamp with Versamark and use um, the heat and stick, and that way you can have little uh, images or even just little blotches of the gold, gilded gold everywhere. Well, I'm going to show you how to do a nice straight border. I'm going to take my tear in tape, so I'm not even going to use the heat stick, heat and stick. I'm going to put this right along the edge of my designer series paper. Bring it all the way down here, like so. I'm going to tear it as straight as I can. It's okay if it's not perfectly straight. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on the two opposite sides first. Okay. That way I don't have to worry that it's perfectly straight. It does, the straighter it is, it does make it a little easier. But now that I've got those there, make sure I push it down so it's attached really well. I'm going to grab my take your pick tool. And I always find it's a lot easier to start down here, not at an end, to start lifting this up. It just comes off so much easier. It has helped me tremendously doing it that way. Okay, so now that we've got those off, I can take this and we'll do the other ends. And I'm going to put it right up again. Oh, looks like I got a little piece of paper stuck on that. Oh, that'll be all right. I'll cover it up. Then we're going to put this right up against the corner. So it's going to overlap that first one a little bit. There we go. That way we've got a straight edge here. Okay. We'll do the same thing with this side. Get that all the way. So I'm going to get that corner covered up as much as I can. Okay that down and we'll remove the paper backing on these again the same way. Oh, I didn't push that one down enough. You want to make sure you push that down so it's good and stuck to the paper. Then it's a lot easier to get that paper backing off. Okay, now here's the fun part and messy part. <laughs> I'm going to grab my gilded leafing I put it, it comes in a little jar, but I put it in this big one. I have to be real careful because if you blow on it, it starts coming out. <laughs> Makes you very artistic. But I put it in here because it's a little easier to work with. I'm going to lay it down here and push it down in here. What it is, the gilded leafing is going to stick to that tear and tape. And as you can, when I bring it up, you're going to see it's kind of messy. See that? I'm going to take an old sponge I've got and start pushing it away and it starts taking off the pieces that aren't stuck to that tape. Isn't that cool? See how it's making that neat little gold border around here? And I found the sponge works the best. I've used a brush once, and then when I got the sponge, I thought, oh, this works a lot better. Now there's a little bit, looks like I didn't get, so let me see if I can stick some more on there. I think the tape kind of folded on me too. There we go, that fixed it. That's not too bad. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's not the look we're going for. We want to get that really neat gilded look. That looks really good. Now see how easy that was? Super easy and you have this really neat gold border. And if there's any that has air bubbles, just kind of push it down a little bit. There, this just makes you feel artsy. Kind of make a mess, but it looks pretty. <laughs> so I'm going to carefully close this up so it doesn't start flying everywhere. There we go. Now we're going to take some ribbon. This is the Fine Art Ribbon, and yes, it's going to be in the new annual catalog. I'm really happy about that. But that gold just looks so pretty with that leafing. Oh, I've got some on my fingers. I'll probably have gold everywhere for a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab my glue dots, and I'm going to put one on each end of the ribbon, like so. Make sure I help the glue dot up a little bit, too, because sometimes it doesn't come up with the ribbon. I'm going to put this right across the top of this bottom strip because I kind of want that to show a little more. Since we've got so much of this one, I'm okay with covering a little more of it up than the bottom strip. Okay, isn't that pretty? Okay, let's go ahead and do some stamping. We'll put this over to the side. I'm going to be using one of the greetings that's in the quiet meadow. See, oh, there it is. Had it covered up. This one says, Thinking of You, and I'm going to grab my Knight of Navy and a scrap piece of uh, 
basic white cardstock. This one is actually, oh, let me see. I think I wrote the size down. Three and a quarter by one and a quarter. But if you've got one that's close to that, you're good. So I stamped that with the Knight of Navy. And we're gonna be uh, die cutting this out. So I'll put this over to the side. And we've got one more thing to stamp. Grab your four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white. And then we're gonna grab this beautiful floral image. And I'm gonna grab my Poppy Parade. And we're gonna stamp this over in a corner. It doesn't matter which corner. I tend to put it in the uh, bottom left corner whenever I do stuff like this. Hold that down for a few seconds. Isn't that pretty? I love the image with that. It's just gorgeous. And stamping it in a color, I don't need to color it in. It's gonna look fine without. So we're gonna grab that card base because we don't wanna lose this. And we'll go ahead and get it attached. Oops, I've even got gilded leafing on my seal. There we go. Make sure I've got it in the corners. And then we're going to put it on the inside of the card like so. Okay, so now we'll put this. I want to go with a dark. You could do the flirty flamingo instead if you want it to be the exact same color. But I decided to use Poppy Parade to look, be a little different from the card base. Okay, now we're going to do some die cutting. So I'll get my stamp and cut and emboss machine and be right back. Okay, we've got the machine out and I'm gonna get ready for die cutting. So we've got pi uh, platform number one, the base plate, then the die plate number two, and then a standard cutting plate number three. I'm gonna grab a half sheet of basic white. So this is eight and a half by five and a half. And we're gonna use some pretty dies here. And I forgot to show you which dies you need. You need this one here. We need this one and this one. So those are the three dies that we need that are floral images. And then here's the die for uh, leaves in the back. And then we will need this label die for the greeting we just did. So that's all we need for right now. And we're going to be doing two of these. So we'll go ahead and put this here at the end. There should be plenty of room. I'm going to go ahead and do this upside down just to make sure I have enough. Just play around with it till it looks good. You don't want them too close together. So they die cut. Oops, I went off the white there. I'll scoot everything down just a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to grab another standard cutting plate. Put it right on top. I'm going to run it through. Okay. Let's see what we have on the other end. We've got this pretty one. Oops. Now I know you're saying, oh, that's white. But wait, we're going to get those colored in and get that pretty effect. And I'm actually gonna change it up a little bit from my original, and I'll compare them there at the end too. So we've got this one. Because I thought of something after I made this, I thought, oh, I'm gonna try this on the video. That way I can show you two different looks. Get those little pieces out. So we've got this one. And then we're gonna need one more of this, because I wanted to have some fern-like leaves behind my flowers, help fill it up a little bit. So we've got that one. Let's get all of these dies out of the way except the one that I need. Put this over to the side again. And go ahead and turn this around and there should be still plenty of room for this one and there is. Get this run through. And see how easy they've been cutting out. I only had to do one pass for all of them. Now they are a little intricate, so you have to kind of play around with the card stock. There we go, get all those little pieces out. But it is definitely cut. There we go, and I'll take those little pieces out here in just a second. And then we want to do one last die cutting thing. So we want to grab that greeting that we just stamped and grab the label die. And yes, this label die is also in the Meadows dies in this bundle. Put that right there. I'm gonna have the bottom go down and then slowly bring this down so I don't move the die. Hold that down. And there we go. We've got this really neat stitched label. Okay, we're all done die cutting, so let's get done with this card. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to color these in. Let's go ahead and grab the two fern-like ones that don't have any flowers. I'm going to grab my blending brush. And I found that blending brush works great, even on these delicate ones. Sometimes I would use sponge jobbers or sponge in, which you can still use. But with them being kind of narrow in places, sometimes I would rip them. Well, with the blending brush, 
it they're, gets a nice soft, uh, oh, they're nice and soft. So you don't have to push hard. I'm just lightly going over this. And one of these days, see how you can kind of see like little images in that? I'm gonna make a card doing that too. But I thought, I oh, will start with this and then I'll try that technique on another card. But you can make a definite neat background doing this. You can see too how it, we've got different shadings. If you wanna make part of it darker, go right ahead. I'm kind of pouncing on it a little bit too. So we've got that one done. This is the easiest one to blend because we're doing the whole thing green. So I'm just, like I said, I'm not using a lot of pressure because I don't want to tear it up and it is still putting plenty of ink on there. How many of you, when you've used sponges, you've had to really push hard sometimes to get it to cover real well. The blending brushes just do a beautiful job. Isn't that pretty? Love that. Actually, one of these, I do want to go the other direction. I forgot. So let's go ahead and turn this one over. So you can um, have them going different directions. I had forgotten I did that. No biggie, if I decide I wanna have them both go the same way, then I've got them uh, colored just fine. If it took a long time to sponge, I would have been like, ah, oh, forget it. That took me a few seconds, we're ready again. Okay, put those to the side. Now we'll grab this guy. And I do want the bottom part to be green since this is our stem. I'm gonna go about to right here and kind of see, let me get off of here, the screen right there. Just cover that up. Let's go ahead and get all the green done while we've got it out. So let's grab this one. Oops, I've got them in, intertwined. There we go. Now this one here is a little bit tricky because we've got some green up here with the flowers. So kind of do it at an angle. If you get a little green on the flowers, it's no big deal. That's just gonna give that neat uh, watercolor effect. There we go, so that's good enough. If it's close, I'm happy. Because we're not going for perfection here. Right up against just everything, it's a stem, is green. This one's a little easier. There we go, so I left those white. Okay, so let me kind of turn this over so you can see where all the white is. There was so much green on that grid paper, you're probably having trouble seeing it. So we've got them like that. Now, I'm gonna take my Poppy Parade and another blending brush with my Poppy Parade. And this is the one I want to be the Poppy Parade. So get these flowers colored in. And once again, just still using that light touch, kind of pouncing a little bit to get the look I'm wanting. If you don't want the pounce look, you can go a little softer. But there we go. I love the different shading. It is so much, oh, I just love these blending brushes. They're so much fun to, they're easy, they're fun. They're also, you have more control over what you're working on too. That's another reason I love them so much. Then we've got Pool Party, and that is this one. So get that nice, pretty, light blue on this one. And I kind of want the bottom to be a little darker than the rest of it. There we go. Let's see if we can get a hold of it. We've got that one. And this last one is gonna be done with Bumblebee. So we'll grab the Bumblebee and get those covered up. Now here's gonna be the twist. And I should have just left all those ink pads open. I forgot what I was gonna do. We'll go ahead and keep the Bumblebee out. There is a splatter um, stamp in the Quiet Meadow stamp set. So I'm just gonna ink it up with the same color with the Bumblebee and I just wanna have a few little dots on that. It makes it look like maybe it had some raindrops on it or something. I just think that looks cool. So we're gonna to need to co uh, clean this off between colors. So I hope to get my chamois out. This one is with Pool Party. So I'll now grab my Pool Party ink pad. And then we'll stamp on top of the flower. So I just think that gives a little more look to it. I like that. If you don't like that, that's fine. Like I said, my first card, I did not do this part. This was something I thought of later. And I think I like the effect. So we'll get this one cleaned up. So this is Poppy Parade on Poppy Parade. This one I might need to stamp a couple times. There we go. So now I've got little dots on all the flowers. Okay, now get this out of the way. Now we'll start putting this together. Let's bring this in. 
Now I'm just going to put some adhesive on the flower parts. I'm not going to worry about the stems being uh, glued down. I want to be real careful because I don't want to tear this up. So on this little one, I think I'm even going to use a glue dot. I'm afraid with this little flower, I'm going to rip that off. So let's go ahead and put a glue dot on that. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm getting these ahead of, ready ahead of time, so I can just grab them and put them down. So I'm going to bring my silicone mat out. And even though these have adhesive, I can put them down. This one has a lot of little flowers, so let's use glue dots on this one. So I'm going to put one on a few of the flowers. It doesn't have to be all of them. Definitely not those little bitty ones. But I'm going to put them on the bigger ones so that they can hide the glue dots. Put that one down. And then our last pool party one, we will put, let's see. Actually, I might just do it right there and that's it. Okay, and that, then because I only have one on the flower, let's go ahead and put, we've got a couple spots here on the stem that's kind of wide. So I can hide those glue dots. That looks pretty wide right there. Okay, so those flowers are ready to go. We're gonna grab these. I'm gonna just put them on. They're gonna go on like the, actually turn this over so they can go opposite directions. I think I'll go ahead and put glue dots on this too in a couple places. My paper's getting kind of long here. I might have to rip that. There's one there. I think I'm just gonna make sure I have one on each section. Find big areas. There are three big sections of this. Okay. I know I want this one to kind of go, let's see, like this. And this one is going to go like that. So we'll do the same thing. Put a glue dot on each of the big sections here. Another thing you could do with this too, if you wanted, I kind of wanted them, didn't want them to be completely flat on here. You could also use adhesive sheets with this. So that way you've got adhesive on the whole thing. But I kind of like having it look like it's moving around a little bit or not totally pl uh, plastered on. We've got this one here, okay. Now I decided I wanted this blue one. Let me get all this paper out of the way. There we go. We've got this pretty blue one. I'm gonna have that one kind of be a center piece. So it's gonna go right here close to the gold. You can even cover up the gold a little bit if you want to. Okay, so we've got that one down. And then we're gonna put a yellow one down here and bring it down just a little bit. We still wanna see that blue and I'm fine with covering up those leaves. Those are just kind of like a base. And then I'm going to take my Poppy Parade one, kind of center this one in between these two here, like so. Oops, I had my finger on a glue dot. And you're thinking, okay, this looks kind of crazy right here. So we're going to take care of that with this one. Now, first off, I think I'm going to put on some gilded gems. Let's see. If, oh, there we go. Had them covered up. These are in the current catalog. They're also in the new catalog coming up. So you have plenty of time to get these. And this one actually was already loose, so we're going to go ahead and put that on there. I'm putting one of the large ones right here, and then I'm going to pick up another one right here and put it here on the end. You could use the medium-sized ones too. Actually, I think the medium is what I used before, so now I'll have two different looks with the flowers and with the gilded gems. Then I'm going to grab some dimensionals, and we're going to put one on each end that way the flowers, oops, we only need one. Have flower, the, it'll cover up the flowers and be higher than the flowers too. I don't have to worry about this bending because it's gonna be higher up than if I put seal underneath it. So the dimensionals are practical too. They're not just for making it pretty. And I'm gonna put this down here just a little bit because I kinda wanna see those leaves a little more. Put that down and see that just makes it look, just finishes it off, isn't that pretty? Okay, now let's go ahead and put this on our card. Let me get these out of the way. Put my seal on here. Actually, we could have put that, a lot of times I would have put that greeting on last. Got ahead of myself, but that's okay. It still works. Never, especially when I put something with dimensionals, I'll tend to wait and put it on last. But it's still easy to get that glue on there. Put our card base on here. Put this right on there. 
There we go, isn't that pretty? I, I think I like it better with the dots. I think it just, it gives a little more color to it. I really like that. And then here's our inside. So don't forget sometimes to cut your cardstock lengthwise in half and that just gives you, an, it's almost like another fold. Okay, let me grab my original here. So that way you can kind of see the difference. This is one without the dots and this is one with the dots. And I also use smaller gilded gems than I did here. That's really the only thing I did different. Everything else is the same. And I just love that gilded um, leafing on that heat, uh, I'm not, not heat and stick, <laughs> tear and tape. Really like that. So it's a really easy way to make a border with that gilded leafing too. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you'd like to stamp with me again, please subscribe to my channel below and make sure you click on that little bell icon and select all. That way YouTube will notify you every time I do a video and you won't miss any. Now, if you live in the United States and do not have a demonstrator of your own, I would love to be yours. And if you don't have the two catalogs, this is the brand new annual catalog. Like I said, it starts next week, May 4th. And here's the January to June mini catalog that's still going on until the end of June. If you don't have these and don't have a demonstrator of your own, please just click that contact me link below in my video description and send me your mailing address and I'll get these mailed out to you right away. Let's look at the cards one more time. It's, uh, I might be able to do at least one more sneak peek video before the catalog goes live next week. So be in the look lookout for that. And please support my channel by giving me a thumbs up or commenting below. I really love to hear from you. It's fun to interact with you. Well, I hope you have a great day, guys. Bye. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.